Today I'm going to show you around this. This is Obsidian. It's an amazing tool for writers, researchers, note takers around the world. It's free. It has loads of plugins, very powerful features, and I think you'll love it. If you've used Notion, Maltigo, any of those types of tools, this is kind of another one in that space that bridges some gaps that both of those tools have. Let's check it out. So here I am, I'm inside of a file called Crypto AG, which is a company in Switzerland. We'll get to that later. But you can see here on the menu on the left, it's a canvas file. This is a canvas, it's like this thing that lets you put images and text and links and things on that looks really cool. And it's great if you want to tell a story that's visual and you need something to sort of give that flow. We'll come back to the canvas in a moment. Let me just explain the rest of the UI for you. On the left, you get all these individual files here. These files are stored inside of what's called a vault. It's basically just a folder. You set up a folder on your desktop or in the cloud or wherever, and all of the files that you create go inside of that folder by default. So it's super easy. You can see here it takes WebP images, JPEGs, PNGs, SVGs. It seems to pretty much render everything that I throw at it. You can even embed YouTube videos and other videos in here. You can see I've got one, this guy on a keyboard. And it works in the canvas. It's really cool. Now we can connect the dots on the canvas here. We can click on an image and you can see you get this purple dot. And if you pull off of that, you can start to connect this to other things. There doesn't seem to be a way to automatically connect these links, but we have the graph function for that. And if you want to see the graph, all you do is on the left, click graph view. And there it is. You can zoom out and zoom in. You can click this little button here and it animates it, which is kind of cute. The only thing I've got within this vault is this singular crypto AG story with all the things linked to it. That's why it doesn't look as crazy as it could be. But as you add more and more knowledge to this, it becomes huge. And if you go to Obsidian's website, you'll see examples of massive graphs that just look crazy. And they can be useful from time to time. You can also choose settings for these graphs. You can choose things like whether there's arrows present at the ends of the lines, how big the nodes should be, the line thickness. It's um, very customizable. Now let's go and have a look at some other things in here. Let's click on CIA. So this text, I just took this straight off of Wikipedia and then right clicked and paste as plain text to remove all the links and stuff. And this is where this tool becomes a bit like Wikipedia. If you've ever used Wiki software before, there's no structure to the files in the back end. It's just a big folder with loads of text documents dumped inside of it, and no one has priority over the other. And that's why on the left here, all you see is this big dumping ground of files. We can link all these things together and it becomes really powerful. So let's just find something of note. Let's say humint. We've double clicked on the word humint and I'm going to press square bracket twice. And you can see it actually wraps it on each side in these square brackets. And then when I click away, it disappears. That's actually a link. I've just turned that into a hyperlink, but the page doesn't exist. So there is no humint page on the left hand column. If we make one, let's make a new note called humint people to people spying. And then let's go back to the CIA page. You can see here now, if I click on this, they're linked together. Let's go back to the CIA page. We'll do something else. We'll choose Federal Bureau of Investigation and we will square bracket, square bracket, click away. We don't have to go and make the file by clicking new. We can just click FBI here and it makes the new file. You can see it on the left and we can type into it. Now here's where it gets really cool. Let's go back to our canvas and we can right click, add a card. That's just a little text thing. You can see this is a card here. 
So if I right click add a card, you just get another little text box. If I right click again, you can add a note or media from the vault or you can add a web page. Let's add a note from the vault and let's add FBI. There we go. So that is the contents of our FBI page that we just made and it's right here. Now we don't need it here, I'm just doing it to show you how it works. If you take a URL, like just copy it from Chrome or Safari or whatever and just click on the canvas and then hit paste, it actually embeds it live on the canvas. <laughs> That's cool, isn't it? So you can just scroll through this if you need to very quickly and easily read something and you can resize it to make it fit your needs. We can also group things together. This is what a group looks like, this green background thing, and then these items inside of it all move as part of this whole unit. All you gotta do is select a few things, right click, and then create group, job done. And then you can give it a name, ownership, and you can apply a color to the background. We want orange. Happy days, easy as that. And then you can just move this around to be wherever you want it to be. You can put screenshots in here. So I just got a screenshot from an article on the web. If you dump it in like this, you'll see it keeps the name. So clean shot and then the date and the time. If we right click, we can rename that and then give it a more meaningful name. And remember, wikis are just flat file structures. So this will just stay like this unless you make folders. Now making folders in here can mess you up big time because it just becomes a minefield of making the perfect folder structure and it just plays with your head a little bit. There is this button here, new folder, and you know, you could have crypto AG in here. And obviously you could put the crypto AG page inside of this, but are you gonna put the CIA one in there because they owned Crypto AG? And it just gets messy. So typically I don't make folders. I just keep everything nice and flat. We can press uh, Shift one, I think it is, yeah, to zoom out to cover the whole thing. And if you click on something like this photograph of the US president and the Egyptian president, you can press Shift two to zoom in and get that image full screen-ish. That's how the canvas works, very cool. Let's go back here to the wiki side of things and I'll show you a few little things here. You'll see this little book icon, this is reading mode, so now it's just in read only, like if you type it doesn't do anything and then if you want to edit you just hit that button or, or you command click, probably control click on Windows to open this to the right and now you get two of them. You get reading mode on the left and writing mode on the right. So if I delete these things, you can see it updates on the other side. This supports Markdown. So go Google Markdown, what that means. That's why you would want side-by-side -side views like this because you can do things like hashtags and it makes headings. So heading one, I can't remember how to do it because I don't do it often enough. Heading one, there you go. So there's a heading on the left. I'm not sure if that's heading one or heading two. There you go, that's heading one. I think you need the space or something. Is that what it was? Yeah. Heading two needs two hashtags. You can make bulleted lists and things like that. I think if you do like asterisks, yeah, bold. No, it's italic. So. An asterisk is italic, is two asterisks, bold, yeah. There we go, let me just change this one to say italic. There we go. So you get the idea. You can use Markdown, which is me using those asterisks and things to format the content. But at the end of the day, you can just command B or control B to make stuff bold and it'll It'll still apply the two little asterisks at the top, but it means you don't have to try and remember Markdown unless you really need it. So yeah, if Markdown is your thing, go learn it. Super useful for inside of this tool. You can pull in this side panel and what we're looking at here is 
four options along the top. Let me just get rid of this editing mode. So this one is backlinks for it. So the CIA page is linked to from the Crypto AG page, yeah. And there are no unlinked mentions of C Central Intelligence Agency anywhere else. So let's see what happens over here. This is where it gets really good for research, joining the dots together. Let's make a new document called uh, Jason Bourne. Uh, worked for the Central Intelligence Agency. Now, you have to type it right, otherwise it doesn't work. Now, if we go back to CIA, you can now see on the right hand side, Jason Bourne worked for the CIA. It's an unlinked mention. It means, hey, I see these words from the title of the page mentioned somewhere else. Would you like to link them together? Are they the same sort of thing? So if you have, say, two or three massive documents and you paste the text in here, you can go through one of them and, you know, click on words and put those square brackets around it. Just go mad doing that and make all those pages. I know this is incredibly manual. And then what you can do is come and look here and see what isn't linked up and then you can link it. Boop, linked. Just by clicking that button, it links them together. So if we go back to Jason Bourne, you will now see it links to the CIA page. Lovely. Now, the other thing is outgoing links. So the CIA's page links to the human page and the FBI page because the human one is here and the FBI one is down here. You can also have tags. So you can see the little hashtag here at the top. I could write spy or espionage and those will all appear on the right hand side. And then you can look at headings. So this is where the headings kind of become a little bit important. So if you want like background of CIA here for heading one, and then, I don't know, infamous ops as heading two, you can see now it's structuring that on the right hand side. So if you've got a really big document that's formatted properly with Markdown, for example, you can just put it in here and see the structure on the right hand side. There's a few other buttons here. One is to record a voice note, which is nice. One is the open format converter. This is where it will automatically try and format content that you bring from other tools. So if you're using something like Rome Research uh, or Bear, which is a note-taking app, and I can't say that other one, Zettelkasten, if you're copying and pasting things from there into here, you can turn these on and it fixes them as you go. You also have this today's daily note button. So you can click this and this is what I did today, for example. There's also the command palette. So these are all of the commands that are available inside of Obsidian. You can see shortcuts for some of them on the right hand side. Command D, delete paragraph. That's pretty cool. Didn't know about that one. But headings are all empty. So we can edit these if I press command comma on a Mac, it always brings up settings. That's what it does. And what you can do is you should I mean, come in here, right? And spend some time looking through everything. There's quite a few things in here that are turned off that just should be on by default. But if we go to hotkeys, we could then filter this by heading. You can see heading one. I'm going to use that a lot, probably likely heading two as well. So I'll make it option one and option two, heading three, probably overkill for me, but that'll be useful. You then have all these core plugins that are provided by the tool itself. Then you've also got community plugins. So people develop plugins for this tool and you can go and install them. These are how many people have downloaded them when they were last updated, what it does. And if we click on it, you get to see what it looks like. All you gotta do now is go and decide whether you want to commit <laughs> to using it because it's one of those things like any note taking app you got to tinker with it for a little bit and get the feel for it and then make that judgment call 
if you want to actually stick with it. And then once you stick with it, you're kind of stuck with it. The good thing here is that it makes these .md files, which means Markdown. I think Markdown is usable by many tools. You could just take it all and put it into other tools and it would just magically be imported in. But I think you would lose maybe some of the things like the canvas, like that might not be in the other tool that you're going to. And yeah, if that matters to you, then this is the tool for you. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you use it, I'd love to hear about it. If I've missed something massive, let me know. And I'll see you in the next one.